So 9.2 is quadratic inequalities in one variable, and that's on pages 476 to 47 in your text. Your curriculum outcome is to expand and demonstrate understanding of inequalities, including one variable quadratic inequalities and two variable linear and quadratic inequalities. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to translate a quadratic inequality in one variable from math to English, and number two, to be able to develop a strategy to solve quadratic inequalities. So it says sketch a graph of x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. So in order to sketch this graph, your easiest bet is to just find the two x-intercepts and then we know where it crosses, and we know that it opens up. So our two x-intercepts will be found by factoring. Two things that multiply to negative 4 but add to negative 3. Well, that would be x minus 4, and then you'll get x plus 1. And so your two x-intercepts are at x equals 4 and at x equals negative 1. So somewhere around here and somewhere around here. And this will label as 4 and negative 1. So as a parabola, we know that it goes through these two points and then back up. So there's a quick little sketch. And this will uh, you need to know how to sketch parabolas so we can actually answer inequalities with quadratics. So if we change this equation to an inequality, like x squared minus 3x minus 4 is less than 0, then what the question is really asking is, where is x squared minus 3x minus 4 less than 0? And that is where is it going to be negative? So where is this thing? When we say less than zero, we mean negative. So it's clear to see that this parabola is negative in between negative one and four. That's where this parabola is underneath the x-axis. And that's what they, when they say negative, that's what they mean. Where is this thing underneath the, the x-axis? So by looking at the sketch of the graph, we see that this parabola is negative under the x-axis between the two x-intercepts. And that means that the answer to the question is going to be a range of values that can most easily be written as a double inequality. So we know that um, it's negative in between x values of negative 1 and 4. So we would go negative 1 to 4. Now, I put in equal signs. We should check. This is just uh, less than. It can't be equal. So I was wrong here. So that should just be a less than and a less than sign. So x is greater than negative 1, but x is less than 4. So we don't always need to draw a sketch of the quadratic, but we do need to make sure that we know which direction the parabola opens, and we need to know the x-intercepts, and that'll help us determine how to solve each of these inequalities. And remember that your x-intercepts can be found by factoring, or if you need to, you could just use a quadratic formula, and sometimes you'll have to. So here's our next example. It says solve x squared minus 4x, and where is it greater than or equal to 10? So we know on a graph, that means where is it going to be above the x-axis? So uh, we need to move everything to one side and then see if we can factor this thing. And so when we move everything to one side, uh, we move the 10 over, it becomes negative. And if we're trying to find two things that multiply together to give you negative 10, but add together to give you negative 4, that's not going to happen. So we're going to use our quadratic formula. Remember the quadratic formula is negative b, so that becomes 4 plus or minus b squared, well, negative 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times a, which is just 1, so we don't have to put that in there, times c, which is negative 10. So we get 4 plus or minus the square root of, well, negative 4 times negative 10 is 40, 40 and 16 is 56, all divided by 2. And what you need to remember is that you need to see if you can simplify this thing at all. So is there anything you can take out of the uh, out of 56 that may, that is a perfect square? And 56 is 4 times 14. So I can take the square root of 4, which is 2, and I can leave the 14 underneath the root sign. And now we have something that can simplify. We can get rid of a 2 in each of these things, divide them all by 2. And so that is cancel out, that's cancel out, and this just becomes a 2. So we get x equaling 2 plus or minus root 14. So basically, these are your two x-intercepts, 2 plus root 14 and 2 minus root 14. Now, they don't look, uh, they're not decimals, they're in, they're ex in exact form with roots, but we can still use those to answer our question. So knowing that this parabola opens up because it's positive x squared, and knowing that we're looking for this uh, parabola and where it's greater than 0, a quick little sketch tells me a parabola that opens up and where it's going to be greater than 0 is going to be on the right and to the left of the two x-intercepts. So our inequality here is a little bit different than it was before. We are going to be saying that x is greater than, and it can be equal to now because we had an equal sign in our inequality. So it's x is greater than or equal to 2 plus or minus root 14, and x is less than or equal to 2 minus root 14. Now I made a mistake up here. 
we shouldn't have the, the negative in here. So 2 plus root 14, because that's this, this x-intercept, and 2 minus root 14, because that's that x-intercept. So our last example says a baseball thrown from a height of 1.5 meters has an equation of negative 4.9 t squared plus 17t plus 1.5 is greater than or equal to 0, where t is the time in seconds that the ball is in flight. What time interval is the ball in flight? So what we're looking for is where is this thing, where is the ball going to be in the air? So because it's a negative parabola, we know it's going to look probably something like this. And so this ball in flight uh, means that we're looking for the time interval. If it says instead of x, we have t, that means this uh, on along the x-axis is a t variable. So we're looking for this point in time right here and this point in time right here. Now, knowing that this is a real life situation, time can't be negative. So when we're looking for a time interval that the ball's in flight, we're probably going to be going from this point right here, right from the uh, y-axis, because that's where time starts. And then we're going to find out how long that ball's in flight. So right off the bat, I don't think you're going to try and factor that. So you should be using the quadratic formula. x equals negative 17 plus or minus uh, 17 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 1.5 all over 2 times negative 4.9. And when that's all said and done, you're going to get two answers. One answer is a negative 0.086 seconds. And that would be this point right here, which is irrelevant to us because we're talking about time. And the other one is going to be 3.56 seconds. And that's the answer that we we're looking for. So it says, what is the what time interval is the ball in flight for? Well, that means that we're looking for an interval of time. So we're going to say it's from 0, and x is greater than or equal to 0, all the way up to x is greater than or equal to 3.56 seconds. So in summary, quadratic inequalities written with only one variable can take the following forms. You could have x squared plus bx plus c where it's less than 0, where it's greater than 0, where it's less than or equal to 0, or where it's greater than or equal to 0. And in order to answer the quadratic, you need to know which direction the parabola opens, so whether it opens up or down. The x-intercept of the parabola, remember you can do that by factoring or by using the quadratic formula. And if you're looking for where the parabola is positive, where that's going to be uh, greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0, or where it's going to be negative, where it's going to be less than 0 or less than or equal to 0. So your assignment is on pages 484 to 487. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.